main function, I think, of Iktam, or the great virtue of Iktam, is to bring people together to listen to each other. I think this instance of it here in Kiel is particularly, has been particularly exciting in that there seem to be many conversations happening between very different specialists. What we have envisioned ICTAM to be is an epistemic platform where people coming from these different perspectives, these different interest groups, can come together and see how their own interests, their own agendas shape what it is that they know and how it is that they know in specific ways. As the host and co-chair, together with Michael Stanley Baker of this ninth International Congress on Traditional Asian Medicines, it's my great joy to express my warm welcome to scholars, researchers, historians, anthropologists, pharmacologists, and physicians from China, from Thailand, Taiwan, Bhutan, Tibet, Vietnam, Korea, Japan, the Philippines, Nepal, Great Britain, the USA, Australia, New Zealand, France, Italy, Spain, Switzerland, Poland, Canada, Argentina, the Czech Republic, Belgium, Norway, and the Netherlands, Luxembourg, Austria, and last but not least from Germany. So happy to have you all here. into uh, the text and the literature and how people think about disease, um, you realize that actually many of the principles translate across both cultures. Both of them paid, uh, uh, pay attention to the medical practice. Um, both of them emphasize uh, the medical moral. Uh, and uh, uh, both of them uh, advocate uh, that the, uh, the patient is the center of medical practice. If we focus on uh, Chinese medicine, uh, which I know best, of course, the starting point of classical Chinese medicine and of classical European medicine was identical. So you get sick, and then you suddenly realize you don't know yourself. You don't know what's wrong with you. You don't know whether you're going to get better or you're going to get worse. And this thing that you call your own body actually turns out to be something an unknown territory, and that you have to rely on some outside person, some stranger, to tell you about yourself. The Western medicine, uh, if we want to coin that, uh, coin it that way, is a medicine which is uh, dominated by the Enlightenment and by, by research and science, and everything has to be proven, and we look for causal uh, relationships of everything. For example, for acupuncture, they could not find any scientific explanation for acupuncture or any scientific exp explanation for some pharmaceuticals. So they would say that, oh, this is just superstition or this is just placebo effect and so on and so forth. One thing that characterizes Asian medicines is that it, uh, dr many forms of Asian medicine draw on a deep literate tradition and they have wonderful written records of healing in the past. Uh, but there are we are increasingly paying attention to those traditions in Asia that don't have uh, a written history, but which nevertheless have a great deal of medical expertise in them. The traditional medicine, of course, is the you know, w wisdom of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 years. It's uh, more universal knowledge. And uh, the science base is not always as good as it should be. But also the science base in the West is not always as good as it should be. So I am critical about both. 
and, and the criticism of uh, anything you, you do should be kind of a combining uh, approach. of standardizations are quality improvement, safety, increased trust of patients and propagation of TCM. But there are also risks of standardization, suppression of innovation, loss of plurality, simplification of knowledge, standard can become a dogma and uh, are there legal consequences if you don't follow a standard? The WHO has taken traditional medicine as an important topic and has developed actually two different strategic plans, one about 10 years ago and one just recently two years ago. And the basis is that uh, if we want to have universal health coverage uh, so that every patient can be treated and has an approach to, to health uh, coverage, then we cannot do that on, on a Western standard, on a science-based standard which is very expensive and cannot be afforded in many countries around the world. We're now moving from a period in which Asian medicine was often a kind of rather um, minor and marginal practice even within Asian societies um, because of the dominance of biomedicine and was hardly known in practical terms in the West. We're moving from that situation to one in which Asian medicine is being very widely practiced in many parts of the world and increasingly seen as a major healing modality. For instance, in France, you have a long-standing tradition of Vietnamese immigrants from the former uh, Vietnamese colonies of France. They practice a Vietnamese version of Chinese medicine. And that brings all sorts of additional questions like um, uh, state regulation. I mean, in, in Europe, every country has a different regulatory regime for Asian medicine, um, different regimes for approval of drugs and materia medica, um, different regimes for training and, and for whether you have to have a medical degree before you're trained, what kind of content the training has, um, and um, uh, the same kind of things elsewhere in the world. And so traditional medicine needs to be supported. But at the same time, the World Health Organization states that the safety and uh, the indications and the procedures should be better described and, and formalized, and the science base has to be improved. Most of these systems, whether Chinese medicine, whether Ayurveda, whether Siddha, whether Yunani, they are very, very rich in clinical entities. They are so rich that you cannot imagine. What we need to do is to bring in objectivity within their own paradigm and then integrate it. Each time congresses will continue to bring together researchers from a different field of studies, practitioners and policy makers such as WHO uh, actors and uh, also from, uh, from, from the Asian countries together in one room in order to to discuss, to exchange perspectives and, and empirical research results and in order to enhance our, our field of study. Mm -hmm.